Okay, this is the first recorded lecture for Turf 122 maintenance practices. And this is spring 2017. This will be the first time that um, I'm Dr. Gwen Stonkey, the first time I've taught it because Jeff Blanc used to teach it. He taught it for 15 years. And then with the amount of people that are online and the amount of people who are in class, online's a lot more work. Um, he decided he would not teach it anymore, and that is perfectly fine. We may go over to the country club for a lab. We may go to Beth's for a lab. Okay, that's why I said if we have to arrange this so we have to meet at a little bit later time and we go out there, I'm okay with that. Okay, and if you guys are already out there getting ready to play golf, we could do our lab, you know, an hour before you tee off. How about that? Okay, so we'll work it out. All right, so that it's working. But I'm hoping it's a lot more practical things that you can take with you and use. There's no textbook, which is good. I've got lots of textbooks we can go through. I'm, I'll bring in my sports turf manager's handbook um, next week, too, to go with it. But basically, it's a three-credit course, so we have four clock hours, so that means we have to have one hour of lecture and at least two hours of lab. So you have class, lecture class on Mondays. I think I'm just going to keep it um, down here. We, the only classroom open is the lab next door. We could go up to 12.05, but it's just as easy to stay on the first floor with only four of us. We'll just sit between Matt's plant collections in there because he sets up for his lab at 10.30. And he can't set up until we're done. So I said, just don't touch his plants, okay? Uh, Mondays is at 8:30. All right, I can I can come to that. Thank you. I'll I'll just do it here on campus now. Oh, and then, and don't switch because yeah. basically I'm I'm counting you guys. I got 20 of you all together in class. There's I'm just gonna see four of you. That's the problem, but that's okay. So guys, that you're gonna listen to this recording, realize that there's only four of us here but we'll make a nice class for you online here so let's go ahead and i can't figure all right so if you're looking at this it's just an introductory course where's my little there it is i had to click it um we're going to look at maintenance on sports fields parks school grounds and golf courses hopefully if it lines up i need to call um out to the suites there in burleski and uh, see if Tim Duncan, because they're going to be putting in the uh, pitcher's mound over there. So Jeff has always taken the kids over there to look at the installation of the pitcher's mound because they have to put in the clay just so, so and everything. So if it lines up with our class, uh, we'll take you out there. If it doesn't line up with class, and I've got to go out and just videotape, because I may be teaching a class at that point too, but we'll try to line it up with him so that we can go out and look at it, or I'll get him to videotape it for me. So that'll be something. So you can at least see that. Um, and know that we have a Pacific Northwest Sports Turf chapter in the state of Washington. Um, Bill Griffith, who's at the end of the hall down there for the Center for Ag and Excellence, who used to teach turf, um, he is actually the treasurer and handles all student input. I think it's 15 bucks to be a student, and then you get our magazine and everything else for the Northwest. So, and they had a, a nice little event over at um, Cheney Stadium in Tacoma for the Rainiers. So, um, actually, David Huey, who graduated from here, is now the, the manager of the Rainier's field. So, and then we've got all our other guys up at the Seahawks field uh, managing the, the practice field. Okay, so we moved it to spring quarter. It was taught fall quarter, along with George Klein's course. But because of my schedule, it had to be moved. So it's not the most opportune time. But we can get it done, and we'll work it out with your schedules. So we're, we're trying to do it earlier in the day so you guys can go out and get your golfing done. And, you know, then if you're online, you can get this as well. So it says 11.08, but we're going we're gonna to be in here for if we're lecturing, and then we'll go out for the lab. But we'll, we'll meet in this, in this classroom because he's got weeds next door right now, so we can't go in there. And quite frankly, for if we had to do a lab in here, there's only four of us, we could get it out and then I can use my camera to photograph what we're doing too so guys online we can we can do that as well okay so we're supposed to be able to when you get out of here identify maintenance practices I think you have you know here's the whole thing a lot of you have already done stuff on golf courses so it's going to be a review if it's not let me know we'll go through it in different practices you may have learned it a different way there's a lot of different ways to do the same technique um, every time I meet a different superintendent I find another practice that I can do a little bit different and maybe improve upon because, oh, I never thought I'd do it that way. That saves me one whole step. Okay, so the people the people in the field, the people you meet, all your contacts are really going to be what's going to help pull you through too. 
okay, no matter where you end up within the golf industry as a pro or whatever, you know, just keep those contacts open. Okay, I can do a lot of teaching here, but those people out in the field are going to be the ones that'll help you as well, you know, besides coach and everybody else. Okay, so we're going to we're going to try to do some of these functions as well if we can get out and work with them. Hopefully, we're going to have a better quarter um, to do that. Maybe in the spring we won't get as much rain as they did in the fall, you know, like what you're doing with George's course, I, you know, this last year, I know. Some people were, you couldn't get out and mow for a long time. And then again, we haven't had the golf course. Um, I'm, I'm getting my advisory committee to put the pressure on the president to rebuild the golf green. We're going to just have one. But they, they haven't, the monies, and this is no secret, the monies, you know, obviously we've got a budget shortfall. And they were supposed to evaluate where the green would go. They gave me permission to put it next to the dome, and then the student rec center went in, or the, that passed, and that's one of the sites. So they won't let me build over there, but I've already had John Stidell from Tri-Cities come over and actually do a plan for the green already. So I'm ready to go. Um, I know. Yeah, but this will not be for the public. It, it will be one green, one fairway. If we have a tee, we'll be lucky because fairways and tees can be mowed the same. It's something for you to work at. The problem is, is putting in... I know this is a lot for you online guys, but I want you to know the history. Um, the problem is everybody goes away and there's nobody here to maintain it. Okay. And I could do a little bit of it, but I can't. I'm supposed to be teaching too and doing stuff. So basically if we have one green for you guys to work with here and to be able to beat up and do stuff and have it look, you know, fairly decent, I'd like to have some plots there too, but they keep telling me they're going to put a building and a parking lot in there too. So I'm, so I need to get my advisory committee to help push this through and we'll get one green built here in the next year. Okay, so it'll be here. But for now on, we're going to have to work, you know, with the, with the, the uh, golf courses that are close by. Okay, but we're also going to look at football and soccer fields. Our soccer field is not in such good shape either because they've never top dressed and they don't have the money to top dress. Okay, but that's the main thing they should have been doing. So they've got to come up with the money. You know, maybe that's one of our labs. Maybe we can go out and top dress the field for them. You know, but we've got it's too wet. Okay, and they want to airify. Well, they go out there and airify when it's too wet, and then we just compact it more, and then they don't have top dressing. So that's why it's gotten so rough out there. Um, I think the last time it was top dressed was 15 years ago. Okay, so money, budgets, and everything is, if you don't have your budget set up, some of the very basic practices can really throw off the whole function of whatever you're working with. It doesn't matter. Um, and we'll also look at, we're going we're gonna to go through all different maintenance areas. Um, so school grounds, etc. Um, I don't think I need to identify co-op internship training opportunities. Most of you already have that. But we can talk about securing industry positions. I know Coach has talked with you guys with that already. And most of you guys online already have jobs. And they're switching around too. We've got some spray people in here in the class. We've got some irrigation techs. We've got, um, I'm trying to think of who else. But anyway, so this will this will be a nice blend of people. Um, I'm not going to take attendance. I know Jeff did and, and took points for it uh, because there's so few of us. I'm going to notice when you're not here, okay? And I'm going to see if you're keeping up because I can check online too and see if you've ever signed in. So if you're not here, make sure you're signing in or you're going to get something from me. This isn't a hard class. Okay, you should be able to get an A, all right? So don't if you just don't turn things in, you'll flunk, okay? And, and Jeff has had people do that in this class, which amazes me. Okay, so if you just turn your things in, you should do okay. All right, just show me that you're halfway interested. You know, get it turned in. Don't turn it in two weeks late. Okay, because I'm going to go on to the next thing, and it takes me a little bit. Letter grades are the same as coaches were, you know, or any other teacher on campus. Again, borderline grade is going to be influenced by your attendance, whether you show interest. So, and, you know, if everybody does poorly on something I put in, then I look at it as a failure on my part, that I didn't get something across, and it will be curved. Okay, and then I'll say, what went wrong and what didn't you understand, okay? Because if everybody did bad, it, it can't be your fault. So we'll work with that. Okay, you know where my office is upstairs? I never answer my office phone. Okay, I'm not there. How many times have you seen me actually sitting there, really? If I am, I'm on, no, not very much. Okay, so here's my cell phone. It is right here. Okay, it's turned on buzz, but what, what you want to do is identify yourself and tell me which class you're in if you need help. Okay, that's the fastest way to get a hold of me, and just don't do it at 11 o'clock at night. I won't answer. Okay. 
and you've got my email address too. Okay, basically the way Jeff had, I'm going to run it the way Jeff did because it, I thought it worked very well. So I'm not, I, why break, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Let's go with it. We got 10 weekly open note quizzes. How hard can that be? All right. So basically 50 points, 500 points. You're going to get a free 50 points because I'm not going to take attendance. Um, lab, again, if you're going to do it as online, It'll just be the points for the lab, okay? It's not attendance. So we're going to actually have a total of 550 points. It doesn't, you know, that 50 points or 600 points, whatever, you got the same chance as everybody else to get total points. So it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, extra credit. And I haven't decided what extra credit is going to be. You know, if you, if you do a really good job on one of the assignments, you know, go above and beyond, you know, maybe I'll give you 10 or 20 extra points. You know, which could throw things one way or the other. So here's what we're going to start out with. We're going to look at uh, mowing patterns for both sports fields and golf course mowing patterns. We're, but I gave you today, I gave you uh, patterns, and it's up online too. I gave you two of each. So if you run out, you can print one off from online too. And I think it, it's got two copies of the softball field up there. So it goes, it goes softball, baseball, softball. So I don't know why it's up there. But if you need more, actually, I printed out a lot more, so if you run out of one of these for mowing patterns, just come see me. I'll give you another copy rather than waste your money. Okay, so we'll talk about that, but that's our lab activity. And then, so these are all the topics that we're, we're going to do over the 10 weeks. So we got mowing patterns, field prep, golf course setup, sports field preparation, logo painting. We'll get to make your own logo, depending on how it is outside. We can go paint them out there. Bunker maintenance. Um, other turf maintenance practices, pond and creek management, uh, practical turf maintenance tools you use, specialty golf course maintenance, and then we end up with integrated pest management and employee relations. And coaches probably cook. Employee relations is one of those things that's hard to teach. You know, so treat everybody like you treat your, yourself or one of your, well, maybe not out your family, because sometimes you treat your family pretty bad, don't you? Um, because you know they love you and you can get away with it. Um, again, if you have any troubles taking quizzes, you know, if, if I think we have enough, sp we can spread out in here so nobody will bother anybody if they need to take a quiz. Um, but just let me know. You know, I'm pretty easy. If you let me know beforehand you're going to have to miss, I'm pretty easy about making up the quiz. It's after the fact that I get upset, okay? So that's why I said that is I don't want you to get in trouble for that. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can close this. I want to go back. What I thought I might do is, oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Oh, I'm doing really good here. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so you can see everything on here. And the first thing, so you're going to want to, um, since we're integrating so heavily with the online students, you want to go in online and go ahead to the first discussion where it has self-introductions here. Go in and introduce yourself to the rest of the class. Let's see, I'll, I'll see if I can, it'll help me get in here. Okay, so each student is required to submit a one-page biography, and you'll see a little bit about me. So that just that's just my, yeah. Yeah, yeah just do, you know, how, how long are you going to read it? A paragraph would be better. Do some bullet points, so maybe condense it. Give the, give the highlights of you, because people are going to be interested in where you came from, what your background is, what's going on, so that you can relate to them, because you're going to have questions for them, too. And that's what I find interesting to me, because I have friends all over the world, you know, which really helps when somebody says, well, what do you about this? I said, I'll just call so-and-so in New Zealand, or I'll just email him, and, boy, I have an answer in, you know, two minutes. The, the Your phone systems have just, you know, if I go on, you know, Facebook Messenger, I can have an answer from one of my friends in two seconds on something that, you know, nobody else might know. So basically, you've used um, the posting, so you just go in here and post your response. But, yeah, a paragraph would be great. You know, but do full sentences. You know, don't do like you did this last week. You know, not a text form. Sentences would be good. And you're going to learn more about that in speech too, aren't you? In English and everything else. So, okay. So I'm going to run this, um, and and I think I've only maybe because it wasn't published until this morning. I thought I had published. So let's go into modules and see if everything is published. Okay, it looks like it is. So what I'm going to do, just so you know, 
because I thought I did this already. Oh, I did. So if you, do you see how there's an X here on, mod, on week three? So nothing's open past week two. So if you don't see anything and I forget to click it, that's what the problem is. Hear that online, guys? If you can't see week three, tell Gwen to click the X, okay? Sometimes I just, because I can see everything, so I forget. It, it is true. You do lose your mind as you go to school for over the years. So you get 50 points for just introducing yourself. So there's your 50 points, okay? And there's the syllabus. And then these are the, these right here are what I handed out to you for the lab. Okay, so let's go back and where's my, and there's a, there's a, I should go back here. So, let me go back. What you're going to see for right now, when you go through the modules, let me go to week one, is I'm going to go into here and it's got everything uh, lined up here. Below here, this is the Panopto, this is one of Jeff's recordings, and I think if I hit it, it won't come in, it wouldn't let me open it before. Let's see if it will now. No, so it won't let me open it. So don't worry about, I'm going to get those deleted and put in the recording that I'm doing right now. And those are all Screencast-O-Matics uploaded to YouTube, so it's a YouTube video. So they're much easier to work with than Panopto. Panopto is, I shouldn't record that, what I'm going to say, so we won't. Okay, so I'll go back to modules. So these little things with the, with the chains will be changing. So if you can't get it right now, just realize I will have the online ones up. Um, by the end of the week, I will I will have it. This one, well, I'm hoping that's up. If not, I have that in another class. This was just um, a lecture that uh, the the professor at uh, OSU is probably going to tell me the same thing. Yeah, it's going to say you have no. Oh, it's going to let me. So you can watch this one. Does it have sound? I don't know if the sound's on here, though. That's the problem. Okay. So you can actually, we can actually watch that in class, too. Okay. So that's good. That one works. It's just the ones that... Okay, sorry, guys. I closed the wrong thing, which is normal for Gwen. So we're, I think if I just hit escape, right? There we go. Okay, so we're going to close that. Go back to... Well, for us in class here, if I go into week one here, okay? Yeah, so the quiz will be the next week. Okay. So basically, if I get through mowing practices today and you take some notes and you've got this up online that you can review, okay, then we'll have the quiz the next week after that. Oh, I don't, no, you don't have to take it online. Yeah, so basically you'll just, they're in Word, so you can type into them and then just submit it back. So if there should be an upload, and if you don't see an upload, text me, because there should be, there's an upload button on there. We'll, we'll double check. Sometimes, like I said, I see things that you don't see, and sometimes I screw it up. So I'm just letting you know I could have a problem this first week. Okay, there's the field diagrams, and there's the first quiz already. So no big deal. So let's let's go ahead for today since we'll just get the first lecture out of the way if I can get this up here and go through some mowing practices. I know it's a little bit. How long are we, have we gone so far? My watch says 3 o'clock. Oh, great. Ugh. Oh, so it's about an hour. So do you, no, you, can go, you have to go to class 1130, right? So I could get through this lecture for us so you could at least listen to this. And then it'll be, and then you'll have it. And I'll get this online for everybody. Okay, so let's get this in full. Okay, so we're going to, I'll make this, I wonder if it'll let me make it bigger. No, but I'll bring it down. You what? Yeah, it does. It does all kinds of things here. So, if I hadn't done it right, if you don't have a, if you don't pay for a, a larger program for this one, it cuts you off at 15 minutes, so I know I'm doing it right, so that's good. So at least I've gotten that. So just a broad area of maintenance, you know, looking at a park. That's actually the golf course, isn't it? What hole is that? Anybody know? Is it four? Okay. Yep. Yep. And that should be the sweets right there. 
Okay. That doesn't look like a Walla Walla day, though, does it? Okay. It, well, I guess so. Today it does. So maybe he took the, he must have taken that in the spring. So first of all, why do we mow? Big deal. Grass plants grow, don't they? If they're not growing, we have a problem. We lost our job. All right, don't we? Okay. Aesthetics. It improves the appearance. Okay. It looks a lot better. Cutting the grass makes the turf denser. Have you heard that before? Okay. Basically, because we cut off the the top growth, what it does is just it stimulates the auxins, and we and we shoot up more, especially with the ryegrasses that don't have rhizomes and stolons like Kentucky bluegrass does. It actually will make it'll uh, make it tiller more, and it'll fill in and make it more dense. And it gives us a nice playing surface, depending on what we're doing. Okay, and we all know that we mess with the with the height of the grass depending on what we're doing. We can slow greens down a lot by just raising the height to cut a couple hundredths of an inch. Okay, we can when they go and and work with uh, the infield on some of the ball games when they have a fast team coming up. Sometimes they'll raise the height to cut a quarter of an inch on the infield just to screw with them. Okay, because it doesn't play the same as the outfield. It's slow. Okay, so you can do a lot of different things. You know, and as we look at the grass I'm going to go over, you know, when we mow, we get the pattern because of the way the, the mower pushes the grass down. Okay, so I just said each different surface that we're working with is going to have to have a different mowing height. Depends on the time of the year. It depends on what I'm dealing with, frequencies of cutting. You know, we all know from the golf course we're cutting the greens every day. Tees every other day. Fairways, same. Okay, depends on some of the lower maintenance courses. Roughs get cut once a week, which means there's a lot of clippings lying around, which screws with everybody. Um, but the mowers have to create a uniform stand of grass. Okay, and it also depends on how much play we have out there, what goes on. But that's what we're trying to get is a nice uniform stand of grass. With golf, we want the ball to be held up. Okay, we don't want it sinking down. Of course, if you're in your rough, I guess that's what you deserve, which is usually where I'm at. Okay. So everybody knows that mowing is taking off a part of the leaf blade, isn't it? Usually it should be the upper part, I hope. <laughs> so, and again, we're doing it to make a nice uniform surface. Okay, so we got a lot of different mowers here. And see a lot of these pictures were, were pulled off the web. So we've got a large, you know, a triplex here that they're using for mowing on a fairway situation. Here we've got a triplex um, actually even out on a ball field. They've got some, some oh, some of these, the, the um, oh, why can't I think of the name of the mower on the sports fields that we've got that you actually, the Toro makes. I know there's another model too, but basically you can lift it up and move it over a whole section so that you don't have things on the same pattern. Come on in. All right. You'll just... Yeah, I'm trying to think of what it's called, because um, we got them, they're using them up at the Mariner Stadium, and we got the used one that they had. Let me give you, um, I only brought five because I thought I only had three, so I'll give it to you. So this is all being recorded as we're going, so hi to everybody. We got a new student that just walked in. <laughs> but anyway, so what it does is changes the mowing pattern. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, there's 16 people listening to you. Okay. <laughs> so when we when we go through this, if you have a question, please just pipe up. I'll try to repeat the question and answer it to them. But and and because we have so many people online, uh, you're going to kind of be operating as an online student too. So we'll go in and out. So you need to put up online your there's an assignment for this week to go up and introduce yourself. So look for the discussion on there. So yes. Do uh. No, because if uh, the question was, do I cut grass to eliminate wilt? No, I don't, because at that point, if it's already laying over, then I've got to use brushes to pick it up. Okay, but a, a shorter, well-watered grass will lose less water than a longer grass. Okay, so just just think about this. So there's a lot of, I can't tell you all the physics that went into this as far as for mowing, and we can get into that. But if you have a, I think I have pictures later on here. So let me let me just go through this, and I think I have a picture of it. And if I do, if I don't, I'll go back to that. Um, but you can see we've got a walking green mower here. Okay, we've got the... I've never seen... Have you ever seen one with a roller on the back like that? 
I'm trying to tell whether it's a I'm trying to tell whether that's a unit that makes it um, I still think that's a a, a walk behind because some of these have some of those automatic units on them now but I've never used one of those you know and we've got all the electric ones and uh, all kinds of different things but they do cost a lot more um, as we go through and you've got zero rotation here too which people really mess up things as well and you can see right here I don't know whether um, that doesn't that looks like a narrower mowing pattern than what this guy's doing but maybe it's just because it's so far away but what do you see back here it's kind of gray isn't it so when I see something like that that guy doesn't have a very sharp mower blade it's just tearing at the tip I had one guy when I was working for True Green um, uh, oh, I hate to tell you, way before you guys were born, okay? But I was the area agronomist. I lived near Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I had to go to this guy's house. He got really mad because one of my technicians had just been to his house, and he says, you know what? He says, my grass is all gray. I said, those chemicals they put on just changed everything. And, you know, since it was close, you know, being the area agronomist, I get all the problems, so I get to go talk to him. So I go out there, and I look at his lawn, and indeed, when you drive up, it's all that gray color. So I get down, I look at the leaf blades, and there's all these little strayed strings coming off the end of it. Okay, so it's not even cutting very well. And I said, okay. I said, sir, this looks like, I was trying to be nice, okay, because the customer's always right. Sir, this looks like you have a dull mower blade. When was the last time you sharpened your blade? I just sharpened it last week. And I said, okay, can we go look at it? So he went over, turned the mower over. He put the mower blade on backwards. It was just beating the crap out of the poor grass. Okay, so now I had to be really, I said, oh, well, you know what? It will work better if we turn it around. You know, just let it go, okay? So never think there's a stupid question, okay? There's always people that don't know what you already know, and you think it's a basic, you know, okay. Doesn't everybody know how that goes on, how it turns, what's going on? Always take the spark plug wire off so it doesn't kick back and take your fingers off, you know? Everybody doesn't know that. Okay, so you got to work it out. How do, I, how do I bring that into the conversation and explain this to my boss in a nice pattern so that he doesn't feel um, like I'm trying to make him feel dumb? Some people take it, I you know, some people get really offended when, anyway, people. They are your biggest challenge. Equipment I can work with. People take a little more effort. Okay, rotary mowers. So, see, that's not too bad. I don't see any rocks that have hit it, like my lawnmower, you know, so I've got to, and I, I haven't changed my spark plug. I don't even want to talk about, I got to, my mower was dying this, I got to go change the spark plug. That's the first thing you do, right? Change the spark plug because it's probably fouled. I love these bigger rotary mowers that have flexible decks, and LazTech makes nice ones because areas may look flat, but they aren't, and they scalp. So just be aware of that, because it, it changed the whole look. And that could have been part of the problem with that last slide I showed, too, is they were using a flat deck that's three feet wide, and the area was actually very undulating. So you got some that was mowing nice and some that was scalping because it was higher than the rest. Um, we had our research farm over in Puyallup was very flat. Okay, well, I wanted to go in and scrape off some sod, so one of the local sod growers was going to bring his big sod cutter in. Well, you know, when they level their fields, they level their fields, okay? It was so bumpy, he couldn't use it. It looked flat, but it was just the, the knife on it was just going like this, and so we couldn't cut it. So I had to use a little 18-inch, ugh, on 30,000 square feet. That was a pain in the neck, so. But anyway, so rotary. Okay, and we can cut, what, what height the cut are we looking at for rotaries? Use George's knowledge for you, okay? What did he teach? I probably shouldn't say that. What did he teach you? How far? How low can you go with a rotary? That sounds like a song. How low can you go with a rotary? Well, it could be either. Yeah. You know what? I need to turn one of these lights off. That will help. Half inch is going to be a little bit of a problem, isn't it? We're going to be scalping at that point. And each, with most of the rotaries, you, you probably raise it a half inch with each notch. I think that's about what they are. So an inch is about as far as you're going to go down. Yeah, and then you're going to be scalping after that. And actually, with my wheels sinking in, I'm probably, if you look at the actual height of cut, you know, you go from bench cut and actual cut, because your wheels sink in, you may be mowing at a half inch. Do you know what I mean? 
So there's a difference between what you're actually, George taught you that, didn't he? A different difference between when, you're, when you've got a, a bench cut where you set it right here and then when your wheels sink in, you're going to mow lower. So you need to test both. Okay, thatch will be a big problem. Okay, but I can mow just about everything with a, with a rotary mower. Real mowers. Okay, this is your basic mower that started from years ago. And do you know where these came from? Did George teach you where these came from? You can read through Beard's books. These actually came from back in the, was it the 1600s. See, I, I wasn't alive then, so I don't know. I'll have to go back and see. <laughs> these actually, the real mowers came off of carpet cutters. Somebody on the East Coast saw, actually, I think it was actually in England, saw them cutting, you know how you make carpet, and they, when they, they do like this, it's got loops. Well, then they have to use the reels to cut off the loops, so you got to straight up like that. So that's where these mowers came from, was a carpet industry. Budding was who first started it, B-U-D-D-I-G. So um, that light still is a pain in the neck. Um, but anyway, so those, those actually came from carpet reels. So here you've got a clip of the reel. Does that sound familiar? Clip of the reel. Okay, so basically with this, it's got a lot of space in between it and fewer blades, so that's going to mow higher. I can't, I can go on the high end, but I can't go on the low end. This probably goes down to an inch and a half. Then when I get to the lower heights of cut, I need a, a real mower that's got uh, closer blades, more blades. Okay, and that's what we use for tees and for greens. Okay, so when I get to that, I cannot... Uh, I can only mow the grass that's down at this height. Once it gets beyond a certain height, or if I shoot up a seed head, it will just wrap around the reel and it will not cut it. So once you have seed heads come up, you better, you're going to have to mow them down with a rotary. They will not cut it. He taught you that, didn't he? Okay, you learned one thing today. <laughs> so that's, and, and you know, these these are probably the lowest maintenance you can get. You know, use a lot of, give you good exercise. You know, if you've got a really small yard, which is, you know, I grew up, uh, my parents grew up in Chicago. I grew up in the suburbs. But, you know, when they first started settling all these cities, and just like in Europe, too, you have these little, you know, about 10 square feet of lawn. And basically, they had big grass lawns in Chicago, too. And so they mowed these with the, and that's what they use over on the west side, too. When I first got off the plane to, to come into Puyallup, because I, you know, I was basically a Midwesterner, and I moved from Lincoln, Nebraska, to Puyallup, which was a big shock, I got off and looked at the, you know, one inch lawns and said, who took the wheels off the mowers, you know? But they're all using estate mowers or real mowers because they have bent grass and fine fescue because that's what does better there. And they can't mow low enough with these other mowers. Now people have switched to these mowers because people have moved in that don't know what they're talking about. And then they're mowing them too high and now they're getting a lot of thatch. So grasses need to be mowed at these specific heights too because of the amount of thatch they produce or what, you know, how their, what their growth habit is. Thatch. Thatch is vegetative matter. We can go over that. We'll actually go through dethatching too. But it's when the plant grows more um, than what it decays. So it makes a layer of vegetative matter on the surface of the soil. So, you know, when you walk across a green and you sink in, when it's real spongy, that's thatch. So you want some, but not much. I mean, yeah, so on a green, I don't want more than a quarter inch. Okay, when I get to yards, the more I overwater, the more I overfertilize, the thatchier it gets. Okay, so we can cause thatch even if <laughs> it shouldn't be there. And some people have thought that leaving the clippings causes thatch, but that's a myth. It does not happen because grass leaf blades are 95% water, and they just decay pretty quickly. So if you're mowing on a regular basis, returning those clippings will add, you know, on a home lawn, it'll add about a pound of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet per year. So I can back off of my fertility by returning my clippings. So don't ever take the clippings off. Just mow more regularly. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, why, you know, I though, although our whole compost industry is growing up on the clippings. Okay, yeah. Um, they could have gotten that way because of thatch. Okay, so then what you have to do is what, what you guys end up being, because everything affects everything in turf, okay, so you end up being the CSI of the turf plot and figure out, okay, how did this happen? Because it's usually a sequence of five or six different things. So you have to take, okay, this, how much did they water? What's going on? What kind of grass? What time of year? What does it look like? Is it an insect? Is it a disease? Put that all together and then you make your decision. Yep. 
And a lot of people don't see the problem until it's way too late and something else has happened to it. So actually what's happening to it now was a result of what happened a year ago. You know, and you're going, holy crap. So, and you know, I get people when I, because I was the turf extension specialist for Washington State for 24 years. So I was on the west side, so I, I helped advise the Mariners, the Seahawks and everything. So basically when you work with people on a, individual homeowners are the hardest to work with. But they send you in, so I, and I did all the extension stuff for all 39 counties throughout the state. So when they send you stuff, they send you a leaf in an envelope. And it's kind of crinkly, you know, so you got this one little leaf blade that's falling apart in the envelope. And I'm going, you're going to have to send me another sample. You know, I need to see the plant. I need to see the roots. I need to see what's growing. Okay, it's no different than any other crop. If you can't show me the plant, how do I know what's going on? Okay, the one-third rule. Don't forget this. Never remove more than one-third of the leaf blade at one time. So that's going to change depending on what your mowing height is, right? So if I'm mowing at an inch and a half, I'll let it get up to about two inches and then mow it. That's probably 25%, but that's about right, okay? So on a green, that's going to be even shorter, isn't it, as we go through that? And we've just kept pushing our green heights down so low. And basically, we've, we've modified a lot of that by raising the height of the cut a little bit and rolling in between. And we can, and why does that matter? Because even a tenth inch, a tenth of an inch more of photosynthetic material on that little plant will help it survive better. Okay, because we, do, we don't need to be, you guys are good at the game. You'll get on the green. You don't need it that short. You know, I'm the one that's out in the rough, flopping around. So, so the plant is a plant. Just think of what we do to that living thing that we walk on and how it grows. I am amazed. You know, you see, you see plants that are poa annua that's growing in cracks and everywhere else that we hate on greens. Just think of how, how adaptable it is. Just think of how Merle handles it out there. I mean, good Lord, the man has no budget. You know, and he is, he is a wizard. I mean, to do what he does, and we'll go out and visit with him too. Is mowing bad? Look at that pattern. That makes me seasick, doesn't it? It's, it? It does put a stress on the plant, but it's not bad. I mean, you know, relatively, you couldn't play on it. You know, what you have to do is change the directions, too. And what we're looking at here is, you know, basically they start out like here. This is going one way, and you can see where they've switched here. They usually have pieces of plywood here that they turn on so you don't see any of the turn areas. And then it's only lighter because he went the other way. So that's just two directions. That's the way the grass is laying. One's laying this way, one's laying this way. And then when you keep doing it, you get the cross-cut pattern because you switched it. So it's pretty cool, yeah. Basically, it just lays down. Okay. Yeah, and you won't, you, it, it just lays down. Actually, you get ruts, too. Okay. So that's one of the reasons. Why can't I think of what they call that? that tore them more. And that's the other thing it allows it to do. It allows the wheels to move over. So by sliding the reel section over, you can move the wheels out of the same pattern so you don't get the running. So there's a lot of different things that have come in with the industry that have made it really, really fun. Okay, so here's how it's bad. It's destructive in that it reduces the leaf area available for the plant to photosynthesize. Okay, but I told you not to take off more than one third, right? Okay, here's how you remember. What are the what are the road what does the grass on the roadsides look like? Thin? How often do they mow it? Once a month if they have to? Okay, so they let it get this high, then they hack it off so there's no photosynthetic material. That's why it's so thin. Then it's got to go back into its reserves, which is in the crown, and push up. Okay, so just know that by mowing more frequently and taking off less, it'll get thicker and it'll look better. So just think about the roadsides when you think about that. So it just takes away all, you've got to, and are they going to fertilize the roadsides? No. Okay, probably not. Okay, it could cause a wound for disease and insect infestations, but if your mower blade's sharp, you're probably not going to rip it up. I could go both ways on that one. I would say that, that watering and fertilization, I would say watering and improper fertilization will cause just as many problems. Okay. Mowing height. I can see a couple different mowing heights there, right? This looks like a pretty fine grass. I'm not sure whether that... These glasses are either... Is that fuzzy to you? It's fuzzy to me and I can't... But I see some other leaves growing up in here and, and 
what I'm thinking I see, here's a longer height to cut, so this area is shaded. This is mowed a lot shorter, and what I'm thinking, and it's made it less dense. Okay, so what I'm thinking I'm seeing by being less dense is some crabgrass or some other weedy grass coming up. So by being less dense, a weed can come in. All right, so depending on what I'm doing, if I had irrigated this appropriately or put more fertilizer, returned the clippings instead of taking them off, maybe that weedy grass wouldn't be coming in. So a shorter height to cut than what's necessary can actually cause more weeds, too. Okay. I could take care of it with a, with a pre-emergent herbicide, too. Let me move this up just a little bit. So mowing height has a lot of different factors that determine what it is, what type of grass, what you're using it for, all up here, isn't it? Don't you make those decisions by what am I doing? Okay. Coach. Maybe that should go to the top of the list, huh? Coach determines. Because <laughs> I know all the coaches, they want you, they'll come right out to the field manager and say, This gotta do something about it. You know, this is bad. Or I, I need a quicker field. You gotta mow it. Okay. Aesthetics. Nobody wants a bad looking field. Proper height. What is the grass? What is the grass that you planted there? What is the appropriate height for it? That goes into the, your decision before you ever put it in. Rule of thumb. Like that? shorter the grass is cut, the more difficult it is to maintain. That makes sense, doesn't it? A lot of work. Keep the mower up. Mowing more frequently, shorter, I'm going to mow it more frequently. I have the greens, got to make sure that the thing is mowed. And the other thing that I don't know whether George talked about this or not is that root, root depths are proportionate to the height that the turf is being maintained. So if I have a, a two and a half inch grass, then my roots are probably going to be that deep below or a little bit deeper. If I go down to, you know, 110 on a green, my roots are going to be substantially shorter. Okay. And depending on what type of grass, where are we going with this? We still got, I'll hurry up. And then we've got athletic fields. Okay, so you can see the patterns they have there. They have a whole book on that. I don't have it, but I should bring it in so you can see. There is a whole book of patterns that you can use on baseball fields and stuff. They've got a sun pattern, you know, and all kinds of things that they use. And they win awards for that, too, so it's so it looks good on TV. Frequency, mow turf is necessary because it grows at different rates throughout the year, doesn't it? And a lot of the people are using growth regulators, too, and not, on, not as much on sports fields, but on golf courses they are because it makes the turf more dense and they can back off on the amount of mowing they have. And you might increase the mowing for special events. Remember the one-third rule, though. Don't hack it back, because you'll suffer for that. That's the one thing. When you have a special event, we've used iron, we've used, we've used green, green dye. we used all kinds of things to green things up before a tournament or before a game. Um, so it's best to mow the turf when it's dry. you got a bunch of people breathing down your neck at 5.30 in the morning, getting off the tee. You're going to go mow it, aren't you? Okay. So maybe you got somebody that... You know, a lot of times what we did was we just, we didn't have a, a very good irrigation system, so we just drag hoses across the green and get them up, or you get a do whip, you know, before they go across. But usually I'd have somebody behind me whipping the, whipping the greens. You guys ever whip the greens? Have you ever, you never seen, have you ever seen a do whip? Oh man, you got something. I did that for three golf tournaments. Uh, a do whip? It's a really long piece of bamboo, or, you know, and then you just come along like this, and you're whipping, you use the whip. The end whips around and you just get, you break up all the clippings. I'm an expert. <laughs> oh, see, well, but, but here's the problem. When you have a green right up next to a house, you think you're going to want to have a use a buffalo blower, you will hear more complaints. A dew whip is a lot quieter. Okay, so depending on where you're at, they won't, you what? Yep. Remo the turf if it's wet. Sometimes you can't. If the turf gets too long, one-third rule, especially on a sports field, I've seen so many homeowners that just hack it back and then it looks like crap for a long time, right? But if you want to keep that area growing well, you won't do that. You'll have to pick up the clippings if it gets too long. And you may change due to weather events. A lot of times you get ahead of the thing. You know, I've been, I've been in the uh, Mariner Stadium when Bob's been sitting there trying to decide whether he's going to close the dome or not. They don't like to. You know, but as soon as it starts raining, because basically when that, when you close that area off, there's a lot more disease because there's no air movement and everything else through there, and there's no light. Mowing patterns. Whoa. 
I don't know that I like that one. And I, I'm not, that's probably, you know, that, that would be one that I could probably do very easily because my straight lines are not as good anymore. Okay, so here's, here's one thing that George probably taught you. The turf should not be mowed in the same direction as the turf falls down and ruts may develop. Okay, better results are achieved by changing direction each time you mow. Okay, that's one thing you should do. The turf plant grows more upright, being healthier and better looking if you mow, change the direction. It's a lot worse when you have grasses that have rhizomes or underground lateral stems or stolons. Stolons are worse because they creep along the surface. So if I don't keep changing direction, you'll get like what we have out here on campus with the bent grass that's infested. you got these big patches that when I walk past, if I go like this, it all lays up like that. So if I change direction, I just, you know, actually cause a hacking of all that grass. I just scalp it to death. But I should do that out there. Okay. Clippings. Ugh. Okay, I would have just, I would have mowed over that another time. But if you have a compost pile, that's cool. Okay, but nobody's going to want this, right? If you aren't using baskets, an abundance of clippings will be produced, especially in the spring and the fall, because the grass grows more. Cool season grasses, spring and fall, put down their roots. They just automatically grow more, because they're not under stress. So you can hand remove from the area. You can blow them off like you guys talked about. Do whip, which I don't know if he's got a... These are Jeff's slides, so I'm not sure if there's a picture. I will find a picture of a do whip, because I've not run into... None of you have ever seen a do whip. Cool. I had to grow up with that. That was I always had one in my cart as, a, as an assistant. I was always whipping the greens after my guys would finish mowing. The garden hose, if you drug a, drug a hose across the green, we used to just stick the hose in the back of the Cushman and just drag it up the fairway. You know, it'd have a, three sections of long hose, one on one side of the fairway, one on the other, stuck on each side, and we just drag the fairway that way. So there's a lot of practical stuff you can do that we've replaced with technology, but I had no tools at that time. Okay, if we take away the clippings, we're going to take away the nutrients. And then we're going to have to put more fertilizer on. Okay, so that's why you look at the greens when you're doing it. And so now we've got an introduction of plant growth regulators. I'll try to finish up here real quick so you can get to your class. Let me see how many slides I have left. And if I have a bunch left, I can finish on Monday then for you. How do I do this? So I'm just on clippings. Oh, I got a bunch more. I got till 40. Let's stop right here and I'll do a, a second recording on Monday. So we got to clippings. I'll stop here and we'll go with that. And so that way that'll put us halfway through the lecture on Monday and we can talk about the, the um, baseball assignment and stuff and I'll bring in the other book too. So, yeah. Yep. And so if you can't be here for the lecture on Monday, just know I'm going to finish the rest of it. It'll be up online. So this will be lecture one or, you know, like 1A, and then I'll put a 1B up, okay? All right, so if you have any questions, I'll try to put the date on it, too, so you know when I recorded it. So that'll help you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this, guys. I'll put, I'll record the other later. Thanks, guys. Gwen's <laughs> better. <laughs> you, can, you can do whatever you want. I'm not, I'm not real picky. How about that? I'm trying to make sure I don't close this.